It's funny, isn't it? When the books that we connect with so strongly can almost start to feel like romantic obsessions. It's that sense of, I'm thinking about you all the time. I want to spend as much time with you as possible. And so I am here with the, the ladies from the movie Clue to tell you about a new major crush of mine, Mrs. S by Kay Patrick. And it feels fitting that I, I feel so passionate about this book because this is a story about romantic obsession. Or maybe obsession is a bit too strong a word. It's about romantic infatuation. It really gets that heady sense of falling in love and sexual desire and and yearning for someone when that desire starts to infuse the entire world around you and time becomes measured by your encounters with this person. So the story begins with its Australian narrator uh, moving to become a matron at an English boarding school and as she becomes acclimated to all of the, the traditions of this very old institution and the routines of this school, she develops a strong attraction for the headmaster's wife, who is just called Mrs. S. The story follows their interactions while building this tantalizing suspense as we wonder, will they or won't they get together? But it's also a fantastic evocation of this emotionally charged environment with all the, the budding egos of the schoolgirls and the, it's this cloistered space filled with, with routines that everyone is following. But, but as we follow the narrator and we get to know more about her difficult past and her conflicts with her family and her discomfort within her own body, her yearning becomes layered with this psychological complexity which is so movingly explored and and I love how in this story I mean it shows how even though that the person that we might become infatuated with um, there is lust there there is a, a desire to for this this person and everything about who they are but I feel like our obsession and our yearning for this person reveals more about ourselves you know in the process of of following through with this desire, more about ourselves is revealed. So I, I feel like this novel says something so fresh and new uh, about desire and really sheds a new light on this this emotion um, while telling this this very specific tale, but it also says something much bigger and more universal. The writing of this story really shines with straightforward prose, which are so precise in their detail and wonderfully encapsulate the, the personality and emotions of this narrator. And I also love how this story, it feels really classic in, in some ways in the environment that it portrays of, of this, this school, which um, is kind of groaning under all of these traditions that it uh, encompasses. But, but also it, it says something so new and, and it creates this environment so wonderfully with all these details like the, the radiators in the school, which can't be turned off even when it's really hot outside and how uh, there's soggy toast in the morning um, at breakfast. It's so atmospheric in that way and there are also these uptight figures of, of the nurse and the, the local vicar and the, the doddering headmaster, but there are also all of the, the schoolgirls and uh, sometimes they, they rove around in um, these antagonistic groups and, and sometimes you, you see them as more melancholy individuals. They are filled with this fiery energy which is uh, sometimes directed at boys and sometimes at each other and sometimes at the narrator herself. There's this line where uh, she writes, The girls know about humiliation. 
they trade in it. And other than Mrs. S, the narrator's only real connection is with the headmistress who becomes an ally because she's a confirmed lesbian, but their, their friendship is kind of tinged um, with this, this slight sense of resignation because I, and they are the most outwardly queer people at this school, so can only really find connection with each other. And rising above all these other figures for the narrator is Mrs. S herself, um, who has this canny wisdom uh, about her and this privilege to her which allows her to freely move throughout this environment, uh, but also has this sense of dissatisfaction with her life, which I feel like adds to the, the charm that the narrator feels towards her in loving her and wanting to be with her. In a sense, wanting to, to save her from this life that she's living, and I feel like Mrs. S partly feels this herself. And the narrator's infatuation with Mrs. S becomes clear not only because of the focus that is placed upon her, but because the narrator's sense of time starts to change, and this really reminded me of Annie Ernaux's uh, book Simple Passion, uh, the great Nobel Prize winner, um, who wanted to write about this passion she felt for a married man who she was having an affair with, and she documents in this book uh, their encounters with each other and that experience in a really non-judgmental way, and just sort of asking what was this all about? I mean, after you know, we get over these romantic obsessions we have, we can kind of reflect on this and start to wonder, like, like why, why did this happen? We can start to see the person in an entirely new light. And, and I feel like what she says in this book and what is really explored in this story is about how the narrator is pulled out of the present because of this romantic infatuation she she has. She's really measuring time through the encounters she's had with Mrs. S in the past and really mulling over them and thinking about them over and over again and really mourning for the loss of certain details that she can't quite remember in, the, in knowing what actually happened and, and sort of obsessing about that, but also really thinking about the, the future and possible new encounters she might have with her. And so in this way, we're completely thrown out of our present time and what's happening in the here and now. Also, when we have these romantic infatuations, certain objects can become so laced with significance. And there are a number of objects like this in this book, which I feel like take on this really great symbolic meaning and which are really beautifully portrayed. So for instance, at, at one point, um, there is a section of a broken stained glass window, which the narrator um, steals and, and furtively um, takes away and uh, gives it to Mrs. S at one point, And it has this significance to it. I feel like there's this meaning which she's trying to convey to Mrs. S, which might be slightly misjudged, or Mrs. S might slightly misunderstand it. So we see these um, this unevenness in their interactions and their understanding uh, for what their relationship is and what their relationship might be. And this adds to this sense of tension between them and to the atmosphere of the, the school in general. And there, there's also a, a famous deceased author who once went to this school and who kind of permeates this novel in a, in a subtle way. Um, it feels like her presence is, is kind of always there, just like lingering in the background. There's a statue of her and there, there are lines by this author that are on the wall. And I just love how this added to this story of this sense that she's sort of everywhere around her but is essentially unattainable. So the novel essentially functions as a romance and works really well in that way, but it also asks these like larger questions about how fully 
we can inhabit ourselves in an environment such as this, like this school where it's purportedly, you know, about letting people and the students grow, um, but with only within the confines of, of certain borders. And within this environment, there's little opportunity for the narrator to grow or to have this self-expression, um, but she is able to find ways to, to transcend her own self, like through this passion and through this desire for Mrs. S. So I feel like in a way this novel is more about her own becoming than about this, this romantic infatuation that she has. And other characters such as the headmistress and the girls and Mrs. S really struggle to find an, an outlet in which they can express themselves, so they, they rebel in different ways, um, some of which are small and some are which are much bigger and more significant. It shows the constraints of their circumstances, and this conflict is really thrillingly teased out in this story that, that reading it became so compelling to me beyond the the romantic infatuation that's at the, the center of the book. So I just completely became obsessed with this story. Uh, it is a debut novel, uh, but Kay Patrick is such a promising author. I, I think this is so exciting. Um, it's wonderful um, that um, they've been listed as uh, one of uh, Granta's uh, best new novelists uh, under 40, um, so I think has so much promise um, to their, their career. I can't wait to see what they produce next, and I hope this novel gets more recognition and some award attention. So yeah, I just loved reading this, and, and I'd love to hear um, if you have read this book, what you think about it, uh, or if you're interested in reading this novel now. But thank you for watching me discuss this. I, I hope you're doing well and reading good things, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.